everyone! Welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to be doing a review on The Amazing Spider-Man. Here we go. As you all know, I am a huge, huge Spider-Man fan. Love it. I read the comics. I have the posters. I wear the masks. You know, all that good stuff. Watch this movie, and I have to say, it is pretty darn awesome. I loved it. Great. I want to give you a review real quick of like 9 out of 10. Boom. I give it 9 out of 10 right up front. Now, here are the issues that I have that I haven't given it a 10 out of 10. Now, before I did this video, I decided I'm going to do a little bit of research on some of the Spider-Man comic books I might have missed because I have not, you know, read every single one. When I first watched the movie, I thought that it was really stupid and I did not like how Spider-Man was so willing to show Gwen Stacy his secret identity. In the comics, it does happen, but it doesn't happen right away. In this movie, he meets Gwen Stacy, they fall in love, he gets a kiss, blah, 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 then he automatically reveals his identity. Had a problem with that. I did not like that. He also revealed himself to his father, but that also happens in the comics. But that happens after Peter thinks he loses his powers. That's the only time he, he reveals himself. The biggest problem I had with this movie is how many times he used his power in public. There's a scene in there where he is on the stands with Gwen Stacy and he throws a football. And like he's so powerful that when he throws a football, a uh, field goal bends right in front of the entire football team. Ugh, I did not like that. He just becomes Spider-Man and he's like obviously showing his powers to everybody. Obviously. Now I get it, it's a movie, blah blah blah, we're supposed to forget that. But as a Spider-Man fan, that's disappointing to me. I did not like that. He also reveals himself to a kid. But that doesn't bother me so much because that's understandable. The kid was afraid. <clears throat> the cardinal rule of the superheroes is you never reveal your secret identity. Now, I would not have a problem with it so much if they, like, he revealed himself to Gwen Stacy and his father, like, in the next Spider-Man or the Spider-Man after that. Now, you might be thinking, well, I'm comparing it to Sam Raimi's stuff. Yeah, Sam Raimi's Spider-Mans were classic. I loved them. Did I like them more than this movie? Not necessarily. I really enjoyed this movie. I just had some issues with it. The other issue I had with it was that this movie was supposed to be the untold story. Problem with that is that everything that happened was not really told. These are things that are, that are in the comic book, like the spider bite. We already knew that. That's the basic. Uncle Ben dying? Basic. We knew that. The only thing that was a twist and different was that, like, we know there's something up with his parents, but we've known that in the comic books, too. If you're a huge comic book reader, you already know there's something up with the parents and what's going on there. But in the trailers, they're supposed to define as if this is something new, like a new take. But the thing is, is that Spider-Man has been done before. Like, this isn't a brand new concept, and to bring a movie that says it's gonna be a whole brand new concept, you gotta give us more, like, in my opinion. They changed things up with Uncle Ben, like, a little bit. In the first movie, they were in a wrestling ring, and he gets pissed off because the guy did not pay him for his wrestling stuff. That's the first movie. And this one, he's in a store, he doesn't pay all of his money, the clerk's kind of a jerk to him, the guy, behind him, ends up robbing him, he lets him go, not my problem, blah de blah de blah he kills Uncle Ben, Peter walks up and is like, holy crap, Uncle Ben's dead. Same concept, different way of doing it. Do I have a problem that's the same concept? No, because it's a Spider-Man story. That's cool, I'm cool with that, that's fine. The problem I have, they have so many, so many plots that just drop, like just drop. One, what happens to, I can't think of his name right now, um, I can't think of it right now, but the guy in the car that the lizard comes after, he flips the car, the whole reason he wanted to come after him is to get him, he flips the car, after that Spider-Man helps everybody, and then you never hear from him again. One plot dropped. Second, the lizard puts a biochemical thing out and turns coppers and the lizard. It's supposed to be for everybody, but they affected the like the SWAT team. But for some reason, like all you see is a SWAT team getting like cured 
But what happens during that time? Like, do they just, like, keel over and just sit there and be like, Oh, we're lizards. We're not as powerful as the Lizard King. Like, is that what goes on? Or, like, what happens during that? That just drops. Spider-Man's going on after Uncle Ben's killer, and then he just completely stops. He's huge and looking for the man with the star in his wrist. But, like, after the lizard comes, boom, he's done. He's like, mm, you know, let's, let's not worry about that anymore. And, you know, he died. I got over it. No! Like, I don't, why don't we get the guy? Like, why don't we understand, like, hey, that's probably the big deal. But they, he stops at that, too. The other problem I had with it, there are lines in the trailer that are not in the movie. Disappointing. Now, you must be thinking, wow, he must have really hated it. I didn't hate it. I loved it. It's Spider-Man. I love everything Spider-Man. I'm just huge into that. Was I entertained? Yes. Did I enjoy it? Yes. Did I have problems with it? Yes. That's why I give it a 9 out of 10. I, I was entertained, I enjoyed it, but is it memorable? Uh, I, I have to say no. Now you might be thinking, why is it not memorable? Did you forget about it right away? No, I still remember some scenes from it, I still get it. But it seemed to me that the whole story was all over the place. And there seemed like there was a lot of that movie missing. I don't know if you've noticed that, but it seemed like there should have been more in some scenes that, other than like others, like if that makes sense. I'm hoping that a second movie does that better, and I feel like two hours and 15 minutes did not go, like, by fast. Like, it was a perfect time for me, but if you have that much time, develop more. Like, I don't know. It's hard to explain. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the movie. Do you disagree? Do you agree with me? Are you upset that they didn't keep the lines in the movie that you were pulled into for the movie like that's the whole reason I'm like oh this is gonna be awesome this is gonna be a whole untold story like a backstory and I'm cool with taking a superhero and saying let's change it up the backstory up a little bit and let's just let's do it that doesn't happen now some might argue well they're gonna do that in the second movie and then continue it to the third problem with that we were told that this movie will do that all we got was the same origin story, the same thing, that's it. Who do I personally think did better? Tobey Maguire or Andrew Garfield? Andrew Garfield, hands down. He was amazing, he did great, he did awesome. All the performances, all the acting, amazing. Loved it, I loved every aspect of that. That is not my problem. It's just a little plot holes and stuff, that's my problem. So let me know what you think, comments below. You rock, see you when I see ya, peace.